Hello friends, this video on diversity in living organisms part 18 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So what are platyhelminths? So what does the word platyhelminths actually depict? The word platy means something which is flat or broad. So we are going to talk about some organisms which are flat in shape. So let us see what are these organisms. These have better body differentiation than cylindrates. When I say better body dif uh, differentiation, I mean that this body structure is little more complex than cylindrates. So let us see what are the characteristics of these, these um, animals. The body is bilaterally symmetrical. So what do I mean by bilaterally symmetrical? The word bilaterally symmetrical means that if we divide an object into two halves, the right half and the left half are symmetrical. Let us look at some of the pictures. Let us suppose if I take the example of this picture. Now if I divide it into two parts, if you see this is the right half, this is the right half, this is the left half. So the right half and the left half are symmetrical. Now if instead of this we have a flower like this, and I divide it into two parts. This is the left half, this is the right half. So do you think that both the right halves and the left halves are symmetrical? They are not, right? So bilaterally symmetrical, bi means two. So bilaterally symmetrical means if we divide the object along a plane, then the both right halves and the left halves are symmetrical to each other. So similarly, if we take something like this, if you divide it into two parts, this is right, this is left and they are symmetrical. So even our human bodies are also bilaterally symmetrical. So if you divide the body through the center, you will see that both the halves are exactly symmetrical. So platyhelminths were the first animals whose body were bilaterally symmetrical. So what, whichever animals came after platyhelminths, for all of them the body is bilaterally symmetrical. Right now here the body is made of three layers of cells and that is why they are given a name triploblastic. Triplo means three. So three layer of cells earlier in case of cylindrates they were made up of two layers of cells. One layer for the outer lining, one layer for the inner lining. So in this case they are made up of three layers. So one layer is for outside lining, one layer is for inner lining and the third layer is used to make some body organs. So how are the three layers utilized? One layer is for outer lining. One layer is used for inner lining. So now we have one extra layer of cells. So that extra layer of cells makes some body organs. So therefore here we can see that some organs are formed. That is due to the presence of this third layer of cells. And since they have three layers of cells, they are known as triploblastic. No internal body cavity. That means inside the body, there is no cavity. What is cavity? Cavity is nothing but an empty space like structure. So what will happen if you don't have body cavity generally? Now, if we have body cavity, that means inside the body, we are having some empty space. So if we have that empty space, the organs can lie in that space. So that space can actually accommodate the body organs. But these animals do not have any internal body cavity. And that is why the body cavity, the word which we use for body cavity is coelom. The internal body cavity is called coelom. Since these are animals do not have coelom, so they are termed as acelomate. So these organisms are called acelomate. That means without coelom. What is coelom? Coelom is the internal body cavity. Right? So what is the level of organization here? It is organ level of organization because here we can see that some body organs are actually formed. So what are the body organs which are formed here? We can see some body organs like we can see some excretory structures. We can see some muscular structures. So these are some of the body organs which are actually seen in these kind of animals. So here the body is flattened dorsiventrally. That is why they are also known as flat worms. As I said, platy helminths, platy means flat. So these are also known as flat worms. Why? Because their body is flattened dorsiventrally. What do we mean by dorsiventrally? The word dorsi means back and the word ventrally means front or belly. The word ventrally actually means belly and belly is present on the 
front so this actually means front so that means the body looks like as if it is becoming flattened from back to front so from back to front it gets flattened and that is why these are known as flat worms because of their flattened bodies so what dorsi ventrally we can understand in this way let us suppose this is some organism so this is the back and this is the front so from back to front it gets flattened somewhat like this it gets more flattened so somewhat like this so dorsi ventrally flattened means the organism is a flat structure they can be free living or parasitic we already know the meaning of parasitic right parasitic means they live inside the body of some other organism and can cause disease in that organism and it in itself receives nutrients from that organism right and what do we mean by free living free living means it lives on its own it is neither parasitic nor symbiotic so by now you already know what is parasitic and what is symbiotic right so free living means it lives on its own so how is it parasitic we know that there are many flat worms which live inside the body of other organisms and they may cause diseases and they receive their nutrients from those organisms now let us try to look at the structure of one such platyhelminth so here we have taken the structure of planaria planaria is a platyhelminth and let us look at the structure of planaria so here you can see these structures they are nothing but the eyes of the planaria so here you also see some branched structure so these branched structure is nothing but the gut the branched gut and here we have one opening so this single opening is both for the mouth as well as for the anus so here the digestive tract is incomplete so not a complete digestive tract it has no mouth oral opening directly to pharynx no true stomach structure so there is what do we have there is just single opening from for ingestion as well as excretion so this is this opening acts as both mouth and anus so that means this with this opening will be used for ingestion of food that means intake of food as well as for excretion of food that means for excreting out waste products from the body and in this case if you look at this this white branched structure you see here that is the gut which is highly branched to transport food to different parts of the body like you need something inside the body which will transport food to all parts of the body because each and every part of the body needs the food so in case of porifera we had the pores right in case of um, the cylindrates we had the uh, hollow gut so in this case the gut is highly branched so these branched gut so these are this is the branched gut so what is the function of the branched gut transport food to different parts of the body transport food to different parts right so here we do not see any internal body cavity or any internal body open space right so the digestive tract is also incomplete here let us they are definitely mobile they are able to move from one place to another let us look at some of the example of platyhelminths this is the planaria these are the liver flukes so again in case of liver flukes if you see the structure liver flukes are highly parasitic that means they stay inside the body of other organisms and they cause diseases they got this name liver flukes because they generally live in the liver of mammals for example even in humans these liver flukes are often seen that they live in the liver of human beings they feed on the blood and also produce their eggs which can actually reach the intestine and cause some diseases or infection in the intestine right so they are parasitic they got this name because they live in liver so how will they get it nutrient they will get it get its nutrients from our blood they will also produce eggs and eggs can reach intestine and they can cause several types of diseases now if you look at the structure of this liver fluke what do you see we have here there is some kind of opening that is known as the oral sucker so oral sucker is used for food intake 
so this oral sucker is used for intake of food then we have here some structure so this is the ventral sucker the word oral, oral means something related to mouth. Sucker means something which sucks things. So it, it the word itself says what is its purpose. It will use to suck food. So it is used in food intake. Now ventral sucker, what is the purpose of ventral sucker? It helps it, it helps the liver flukes to attach to the host. So who is the host? For example, if it leaves inside the body or inside the liver of human beings, so this ventral sucker will actually help it to get attached to the host, to get attached to the human beings. Here we have the small pore or a small opening that is the excretory pore. So that means all unnecessary waste materials will be excreted out from this pore. And here also you can see one small pore that is the genital pore. So now if you look at the structure of planaria and the structure of liver flukes, they are not exactly similar, right? At planaria, we have just one opening for ingestion as well as excretion. But in case of liver fluke, we have separate openings. There is one oral sucker for ingestion. There is one excretory pore for excretion, right? So the structures of all the organisms in, under the same class are not exactly similar, but the body organization is similar. If you compare these two structures, both planaria as well as liver flukes, you will see that in both of them, you do not have a complete digestive tract. There are some organs which are formed. For example, here oral sucker is formed, some excretory pore is formed. Even in planaria, you have an opening for excretion. Same opening is for ingestion. So some kind of organs are formed. So they, both of them are at organ level of organization. Both of them are mobile. Both of them are triploblastic, that is both of them are made up of three layers of cells. One layer for outer lining, one layer for inner lining and the third layer for um, forming these small, small organs. Both of them are acelomate, that means they do not have a coelom or they do not have an internal body cavity. So these are some of the things which are in common between both these structures, right? Let us take another example of tapeworms. So if you look at the structure of tapeworm, they have a ribbon shaped body which, are, which is covered with thick cuticle. So what is cuticle? Cuticle is a kind of hard covering with, to ensure protection of the internal body parts. So they have a ribbon shaped body. Why do they have a ribbon shaped body? To ensure larger surface area for better absorption of substances, be it food or other nutrients. Now in tapeworms, there is no digestive tract. So how does the food intake takes place? It happens directly through the skin. So directly through the skin, the absorption of food happens. So there is no specific digestive tract, right? So these are some of the examples of uh, platyhelminths or flatworms. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.